Ready. Okay. What I am proposing today is a day planning service, and I want to base it in the Salvation Army. Sorry, I didn't give you a heads up. And the reason I want to do this, well, first of all, I want to read something to you. And this is from the Social Work Code of Ethics regarding the value of social justice. Social workers pursue social change, particularly with and on behalf of vulnerable and oppressed individuals and groups of people. Social workers, social, I'm sorry, I'm shaking so bad. Social workers' social change efforts are focused primarily on issues of poverty, unemployment, discrimination, and other forms of social injustice. These activities seek to promote sensitivity to and knowledge about oppression and cultural and ethnic diversity. Social workers strive to ensure access to needed information, services, and resources, equality of opportunity, and meaningful participation in decision-making for all people. So basically what we as social workers want to do is we want to go out to those people that everybody feels unworthy or do not deserve the same opportunities. But back in the 1850s, we Booth went out into the streets of London, left the formal church to administer to the poor, the homeless, the sick, the destitute. He felt those people also deserved the same opportunities as everyone else. So either he was the first social worker, or social work based a lot of their philosophy on the Salvation Army's principles. So what I'm proposing is a vision to increase the individual's ability to become self-reliant and functioning in a responsible manner through employment, education, and empowerment, so as to contribute productively to the community at large while providing for themselves and their family. And how how I came about this idea is because I did do some surveys for individuals that use the services of the Salvation Army and also some individuals out in the community. And it was asked about, did you use services of the Salvation Army? Um, you know, different typical things that affected their lives. And there was two questions, or one question. I wanted to know what was the two biggest problems they saw in their community that weren't being addressed. And I was expecting unemployment, um, high rate of housing, high utility rates. And that's not what I got from a lot of people. It was things like the condition of the sidewalks, the fact that there was no public restrooms downtown, things like they had nowhere to go at noon or in the morning where they could gather, socialize. People didn't want them in their businesses. And that really surprised me. But then I realized, well, if they've never been exposed to anything other than what they're experiencing right now, why would they have higher expectations? So I got to thinking, maybe we need to change their view of life. And then I got to doing some more research and discovered that almost 2,500 individuals, <coughs> almost 400 families in Morgan County earned below the federal poverty level. You know, with 8.8 percent unemployment rate, you know, the people who qualify for unemployment are getting, on average, less than a thousand dollars a month. Average disability payment is 674 dollars. Now, in Jacksonville, a city of 20,000 who has two nationally ranked colleges and a well-known community college, also has a population where, you know, neighborhoods they're some populations that have adults, less than 25% of the adults have high school education. I mean, you don't think about that. Two colleges, community college, a huge school district, and we still have people who cannot read and write at a functional level. Also, the Jacksonville Food Pantry served over 2,500 families in 2010. That's a 45% increase in four years. Almost 400 of those were new families, people that hadn't used the services before. In addition to the food bank, Salvation Army also provides hot lunches to you know an average of 80 people a day, give or take. And then another 100 households use the commodity program per week. And on any given night, there can be about 80 people who are homeless in Morgan County. It's 240 people that in the course of 12 months will experience homelessness at some time. And also, the average rent for a one-bedroom efficiency apartment in Jacksonville is $379. I mean, that's almost 
over half of some of the clients in the Salvation Army's income. Now, what is my plan to change this? The goals and strategies in this plan are those that are aimed at empowering clients, and it's really important to empower people to transition from the reliance on public assistance to reliance on their own skills and strengths, because everybody has some skill. The Salvation Army currently provides assistance on a case-by-case -case situation. That means if you have an eviction notice, a disconnect notice, water disconnection, you can come in one time per year and get assistance. But that there isn't any follow-up. I mean, Alan does a great job, Kat does, does a great job of trying to help as many people as they can, but there is just a serious time issue. So, what's my goal in this day planning program? It's to encourage clients to explore their own spirituality and strengthen their faith. And you can do this by providing informational pamphlets on the many different faith-based groups that participate at Salvation Army. You know, when you talk about faith, you know, people kind of blow you off. I was not a really religious person until 9.30 this morning <laughs> when my daughter wrecked her car yesterday. And so when I got to the hospital and realized that she was going to live, everything was going to be okay, I was mad, I was aggravated, I was frustrated. This was such an inconvenience. There was no way we could afford this. It was just totally going to screw things up. And then we went to Springfield today and I saw her car. And I realized at that exact moment that there had to be a higher power out there because that it was had to be for God's divine intervention that my kid walked away. And I realized in the big picture the problems I was so upset about weren't that bad. That maybe there was somebody backing me up that would make me think things will be okay. So you've got to have faith. You've got to believe in something. Goal number two is to help clients obtain and maintain employment. You know, I'd like to see this done through maintaining a database of current job listings and resources available to job seekers. Um, want ads are on the bulletin board of the Salvation Army every day. People are welcome to come in and look at them. And evaluate the methods clients are using to seek jobs. First of all, if you go into an interview wearing holy blue jeans, that's not going to work. Some people don't realize that. If you fill out an application, throw it on the counter, walk away, that's not going to get you anywhere. Ensure that clients have the appropriate skills. And if you're filling out an application, but you have horrible spelling, or you can't read the question adequately enough to answer it correctly, you're not going to get anywhere. And a big issue in Jacksonville is because there's no Social Security satellite office or personnel willing to come to Jacksonville it is very hard for people to get replacement social security cards. Without that, it's impossible to get an ID. You don't get a legitimate job without either one of those. Now this day planning service could facilitate that. It could help them go over applications. It could help them with um, interviewing skills. My third goal is to help clients formulate a budget with realistic expectations. And that's realistic. Now, work with clients to ensure that the amount of income they have will actually cover their expenses. Now, that sounds like budget 101, but it's a skill that a lot of people don't have. And another big one, help clients determine wants versus needs. Yes, they may want to live in that $700 a month apartment, but if they're making $674 a month, it's not realistic. You know, sometimes just sitting down with people and brainstorming, thinking outside the box, saying, well, have you thought about this possibility, or how can we do this differently, then you have a Im big impact on their life. Goal number four would be to help clients to better meet their nutritional needs with resources they already have. You know, teach clients how to shop efficiently using coupons or the circulars that come in the paper. Educate them that if they get $500 a month on a link card, and yet they go to the store and buy prepared foods every day for every meal, that link card will be gone by mid-month. And also, educate them on how to use things that they can get in commodities, like the fresh produce, the fresh fruits and vegetables, the bakery. Show them ideas on how to use that so that they can make it last. 
And the last one is maintain a database of services clients already received and refer them to other services that might help. I know there is a database the Salvation Army uses, and the captain might be able to explain this a little bit more, the Rails database that accesses all the organization's information. I would like to see that utilized. And the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The strengths of the Salvation Army right now, everybody knows it. Everybody sees the red kettle, immediately knows who it is. They also have a proven track record. The services they provide are provided with integrity, with the intention to really help the people. And people respect that. They respect the Salvation Army's integrity. Now the weaknesses. Salvation Army works on a pretty tight budget. They rely on funding from the United Way, from FEMA, FEMA being government, enough said there. The thrift store, public and private donations, and the red kettle campaign. You know, the problem with that is they're there every year, but given the state of the economy, you know, it fluctuates. It, it's not a stable figure. The opportunities that are there for the Salvation Army if they institute this policy would be, you know, increase their well-respected reputation, increase other organizations' confidence in sending people there to use this service. And, you know, they already have well-established partnerships in the community. I mean, Walmart, County Market, they deal with DHS, deal with Food Bank, deal with everybody, almost everybody in this community. Also, more clients will have the opportunity to participate in their community with a little education, with a little self-reliance, with a little more empowerment. They can go out there and they can give back to the community, especially those that have used the services. You know, maybe they can pay it forward. And the threat. Well, like I say, can't guarantee a dollar amount for funding. And also, you know, there's no guarantee that people will use this service. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But give him an opportunity. And my final thoughts. You know, we can't deny that hunger, poverty, and homelessness are in our community. They're, in fact, in our backyard. And we can't say, build more houses, bring in more jobs, without first considering, are the people we're dealing with capable of using those improvements? You know, are they qualified for those new jobs? Can they afford those new buildings? I mean, we have to give them hope. We have to give them faith. We have to give them information. We have to give them education. We have to give them the sense that they can do this on their own. And I hope that this is a service that can come together. I hope it can be implemented in the near future. And I hope that it will help those who most need it. Thanks. Stay up there. Uh, we, this is when we open it up for questions and answers. So we will open it up for questions. Does anyone have questions for D? Oh, as your professor, I'm not going to let you get off that easy. So I have a question. So what you what you described here, I think, is a what I would call a, cl a classic case management type of model, where um, you're working with clients. Um, who are receiving charitable oriented services, but you want to give them and educate them about life skills, which would include things like spirituality and how to shop and how to think of nutrition. Um, have you thought about, is that going to, um, I mean, are you going to do this with every client that comes through? Is there a, is there a way that you capture them that provides this opportunity you mentioned? to educate them on life skills? First of all, there are those individuals who have a history or who are on, on like a cycle of public assistance. They know when their next assistance is available. And there's a whole subgroup there. Also, the homeless shelter, for those on extended stay, are supposed to have a service like this in place that they need to be going out and looking for a job and trying to get schooling in place. That service isn't being provided at this moment. So I think it could be targeted toward those individuals also. And it's not like reinventing the wheel. It's kind of expanding on what Alan already does in his office. But if you have a disconnection and you get assistance to keep your power on, what are you going to do next month? I mean, 
have they thought about next month when they're going to have the same bill? How are they going to manage it? That's who I want to deal with. Other questions? Don't be on the bottom. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that communication. Thank you, Dee. Appreciate it. Thank you.